Welcome to this latest festive episode of the Informing Choices Minipod. On the approach to Christmas, we are exploring what futurists think Christmas in 2040 might look like. And I'm delighted to welcome back to the podcast, futurist and keynote speaker, Rohit Tulwa for this festive project. Rohit, firstly, Merry Christmas to you. Tell me, what might Christmas look like in 2040? Well, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to you, Steve. I think if we think about Christmas, there are a number of elements to it. There's the physical and visual environment. There's the family connection. Food plays a very big part. There's the gifting. And then for some, there's the religious experience of it. And so if we start to think about how those things evolve. So in terms of our physical environment, we can imagine that with 3D printing, you could literally print what your physical environment looked like at home. So if you wanted to have a nativity scene, you would 3D print that the day before your, uh, your celebrations. You could 3D print the lighting rig that surrounds your house. So if you want to have your house looking like Broadway in New York with all the buildings and all the lighting seen there, you'd literally 3D print it with the lights embedded in the 3D printing structure. Your tree could be grown literally in the days before using fast growing materials. We're already seeing that being used with the idea of growing buildings. So we'll, we'll have that kind of thing going on. Then if you think about the family relationships, well, families are becoming more and more dispersed. Our children could be on one continent, our parents could be on another, our nieces and nephews could be on a, a third continent. So how do we pull everyone together? Well, technology is going to be at the point where the future versions of augmented reality and virtual reality will be multi-sensory. Holographic technology will be part of that. So you will literally be able to hug grandma, even though you're in the UK and she's in Australia you'll be able to pull virtual crackers with the other person and be able to have all of those kinds of experiences together and see their environment as though you were in the room, feel the temperature of being in Australia on a sunny Christmas day versus being in London on a crisp and cold uh, winter's day. So you'll be able to feel and sense every part of it. Then if we come to the food, food plays a very, very big part of our Christmases. The problem, if you like, is that people can often spend the entire day in the kitchen uh, making the food and then the meal is over quite quickly. And as much as we love preparing the food, not all of us as good as others at cooking the meal. So there's an awful lot of polite compliments for food that's pretty average. Not but, in this house. <laughs> yeah. We know that there are excellent chefs out there who do a damn good turn at, at Christmas food. And you don't have to have a turkey or whatever it is. And by then we might be eating entirely plant-based food or you know an insect meal. And the question there is, well, how are we going to do that? So what we'll see is with the embedding of sensors in everything, in our saucepans, in our utensils, uh, we'll be able to download the recipe from Delia Smith to Gordon Ramsay and the cooking instructions. And our home robot will basically execute that. The pan will tell you about the temperature, the viscosity of the food in it. It will tell you about the, the utensils will also be able to test the aromas. And so they'll be able to manage the cooking process. If your oven isn't quite up to scratch, in terms of the way it heats your, your turkey, then the cooking utensils and everything can adapt. And of course, our oven by then will we'll be able to flash cook your, your turkey in seconds. So basically, our robotic devices, our smart utensils, will be able to cook whatever we want. And we may even be 3D printing some of the food again. And what that means is we'll have a lot more time for family. So we'll have a lot more time to interact and communicate which is great 
except the highest murder rate domestically happens on Christmas Day. <laughs> and so we'll need far better ways of communicating and spending time with each other. So that's where artificial intelligence is going to come in because it will understand the people that uh, we know and who surround us and, and be able to communicate with their AI will be able to stay in safe territory on conversations or our AI will advise us that we're saying things that are a trigger for the other person. Yeah. It will advise us on the topics to raise with them. AI will also be helping people to get stressed with the, the things they need to do, step out of the conversation, take some time out in another room, all those things to help people deal with the mental stress of it. And then finally, the gifts. And with a move to a very environmentally conscious world there, so everything we give will also come with a footprint. We'll know about it in its entire provenance, where it was made, the carbon emissions, if any, associated with it, the energy consumption, the water consumption, any waste that was generated in the process, what social benefits were delivered across the entire community working with it or where the processes happened and even a report as to the contributions of what would be the next version of the sustainable development goals by then. And we won't need to uh, take away the surprise because our AI will be able to talk to the AI of the person we're buying gifts for to give us suggestions of what they might want and what they might need. And because we'll all have so much uh, that we can have a relatively low price because of exponential advances in science and technology, there'll also be a much higher level of recycling. Mm. So we'll be guided as to the, the materials we get that uh, anything is made out of, we'll be able to ensure it's 100% recyclable or recyclable, uh, reusable in the circular economy so that we know that that gift will have a lifetime rather than be used once and then put on the shelf. So we'll have created this entire multifaceted experiences and be able to access that. But the, but the great thing is that with these exponential advances in science and technology, the price is gonna drop dramatically. So the access to these things is going to be enormous much wider than today. Even if you, you don't have much money, you'll be able to do most of these things. And the great thing is we'll probably have some form of universal guaranteed services and universal guaranteed income. And what that means is that everyone will be able to afford something. And an awful lot of the things we would need in our home, we won't be paying for, whether it's heating, lighting, uh, electricity, all of those things. So we won't have to worry about an enormous amount of the things that happen. And the great things uh, are that even our wrapping paper will probably self-ingest so we don't have to throw it away or we'll be able to put it into a, a, a waste um, recycler that will turn it into heat or energy for the home. So we'll be living 100% renewable, environmentally uh, sustainable Christmas and therefore feel like we're not being overly consumerist. We're having more time for connection with our family. We're giving more personalized gifts. We're connecting with family and friends across the planet and we're eating incredible food. Right, that's um, absolutely extraordinary. And I, and I love the kind of the ending there on a very happy and sustainable Christmas in the future. Rohit, thank you very, very much indeed. And thank you everyone for listening. You can learn more about Rohit and his work by connecting via the links in the podcast description. In the meantime, do let your friends and colleagues know about the Informing Choices Minipod and a Merry Christmas to you all.